And then Pastor Andrew is here. Pastor Andrew, uh, why don't you come? This is your time. <laughs> Let's welcome Pastor Andrew as he comes. He was saying about towing that car that he was afraid it might get towed. Uh, you should be afraid because they are going to tow it <laughs> if it's your car. Uh, they have totally transformed the stage, but I am so happy I get the steps. <laughs> yeah, I get to yeah, go down here. And, uh, woo, keep up with me. All right, keep up with me on that. All right, let's pray. And then uh, we will dive into this. Hmm. Father, thank you that you love us so much and that you care for us. And now, Father, I say, let it be so. All that is your will and all that is your desire for me to speak and all to be heard. Just that you have privilege, right, and just take ownership of this service through your Holy Spirit that we might know all that you have for us. We thank you for all that you do and all you have done and will do for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right. Well, I have a topic here that, hmm, uh, you can put the slide up. Um, yeah, I knew that would happen. Um, yeah, it's a hard topic. When it started out, I was supposed to have spoke in March, but I, so much going on and I couldn't speak. I just couldn't get it done. And so uh, Dr. Pahacek, AKA Pastor Greg, uh, traded with me and stuff. And I really didn't have anything to say. And then God, after I, he um, traded with me, then I felt, you know, God started downloading me a little bit about something. And it was like the cross, you know, it was really, the cross. And I was like, okay, I feel like I'm getting a message now. And then a little bit later, day, whatever, then all of a sudden God took me towards about death and just started processing that with me. And then I was like, uh, oh no, Lord, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that message. You know, <laughs> that's a theologian message. That's a pastor Greg or pastor Tom message, Lord. Uh, and so as I was wrestling through it and God was kind of downloading stuff and it really was, you know, it's like, Lord, people don't want to hear about this. We don't want to talk about that. We know it's there, but so it really got to a point where I was going to uh, go in and talk to Pastor Tom to say, hey, here's what I feel God's telling me, but I just don't know, you know, and so I went through it and God had given me quite a few confirmations that this was where it was. After you downloaded, I was, my wife and I were at home, we were watching the show, and that particular episode happened to be about death. This guy's father died, and just going through that process of different things. And there were just other things that he had confirmed. But uh, one of the things that was really confirming to me was, was that I had went and uh, I was here, and Pastor Tom was preaching, and I think it was his second, his two Adams sermon that he had did. And in there, he had talked about a lot of stuff, but then he had brought up the point about how people who aren't Christians, who aren't saved, how they fill up their space, their mind and stuff with a whole lot of stuff. They put a whole lot of stuff there, keep their minds busy so that they don't ever have to think about their death. They don't have to think about that part. They're just living life. And then he was, he went into, but us Christians, we don't have that. We, we, you know, we have heaven as our hope. We have Christ as our hope. And then he was saying that, and that wasn't his message, but that was just like one of those bunny trails he went on. And my wife leans over to me, she goes, and thus your message. And, you know, and I felt like, yeah, you know, I was like, thank you, God, that he went before me. And again, if you listen to Pastor Tom's, which I did, because I was trying to find that part in there to play that part uh, back here. But that was one of those, he just, thank you, God, I think he said for me. Because it wasn't in the uh, video, and I listened to both of them. 
But when I listen to both of Pastor Tom's video, they pretty much are the same topic about what I'm going to speak about. It, it's pretty much the same thing. And usually, you know, I've had this conversation with Pastor Greg is that, you know, who's attentive? How is the congregation really attentive to what God is saying Sunday to Sunday? Each Sunday, I feel like God's building on something he said last Sunday. And then he's saying this Sunday, and he'll say the next Sunday, that he actually speaks to a congregation. As he's gathered us together as brothers and sisters in Christ and his family and his Christian people, God is speaking. And so we really have to have our ear attentive to that. And so I felt confidence in this because of, one, um, yeah, that, you know, Pastor Tom has already pretty much said a lot of this. And the other part is, is that um, I find it to be true. The fact that um, God speaks to me is my hope in the ever after. The fact that I stand here and tell you that I hear God and God downloads to me lets me know that there's more beyond this for me. And so this is up here that hopefully by the end of this, that yes, as we see this and that the coffin is there, but it's nothing that we fear because death has to be placed in its right perspective. If anything, that the coffin can challenge us that if this, we see the coffin and we think, oh, that's it, it's the end, it's over, whatever, but then am I making the most of my life then before this? Am I living it out? And am I living it out in that way that God would have me do? Because again, I think here's the deal. The title is Our Resurrection, and there is a resurrection day. If we know Jesus or not, there will come that day. We will rise from this. I, felt, I feel like a lot of times when I get there and I come up out of my coffin, I'm going to be like, whoo just like I got off a roller coaster ride. <laughs> it was like, whoo you know? I'm in heaven, the ground is solid, everything's back. I feel like I'm going to be like, whoo you know? And it might be like, well, we'll put you in there and say, no, 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 you ain't sending me back there. You know, I'm not going back there. So I feel like, yeah, that's it, God, I'm here with you. And what I just went through down there, oh boy, I'm glad that's over. You know, I'm glad I'm done. I, I said it once before in one of my other sermons about when I get to heaven, and I know Jesus says he's got a mansion for us, but I said it before, and I mean it, I'm going to be a bum, a hobo when I get to heaven. I am. I'm going to walk around with a stick. I don't pay no bills. I don't want no responsibilities. I don't want to see my mansion. I'm just going to show up at other people's mansion at dinner time. That's what I'm doing. I'll show up there at dinner time. That, that's, that's the way it is. When I get to heaven, I, that's how I'm doing it. You know, as it comes to death, I've always tried to uh, work out my fear in my own mind about death. I've always known that, you know, like you said, with death, when a baby's born in the old days, before me, um, when the baby was born, they used to spank the baby on the butt to, for the alive thing, but we're more advanced than that now. And, uh, but at the same time you do that, that's when the life starts, death also starts. When the baby is born, death starts. And therefore then, so I've always tried to work it out in my mind that I'm going to die. So I've never tried to be afraid of dying, but how I die is what I've always um, thought in my mind in certain ways. A lot of that is, you know, like sometime you hear about it. I don't want to, I didn't, one of the things that I guess to say if it was a fear would be where you get abducted and some psychos got you and take your body out and then you torture you and then your family don't have nothing to bury and they're left with an openness and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like those things, you know, like, like that. And, and I think that comes to it. It's the biggest deal isn't so much about us in people really sometimes being afraid in, in dying. Sometimes it's just about how we die that we all kind of grapple with and in those things. So as I had processed that and I worked through a lot of that in my fears of, of just the, how I die, but I must tell you, there was a time earlier in my Christianity when I was kind of coming in into this and just a young Christian, I, I don't even know if I was even on staff at Mad City at the time, 
but uh, as I was processing through and I was learning Christianity and I was really believing it and I was going into it and taking it in, like I said, that, okay, this is real. Jesus is real. All right, I'm liking this. And then I go off and I struggle in the world with things and I'm doing all of this and I'm going through this and then after a while and I'm going back, okay, Jesus, it just didn't make sense to me. Why do I want to be here? Jesus, if you got all of this and all of this is happening, but then I'm living here and I'm going through all of this and I'm trying to keep up and then I'm, fall, I'm failing, I'm falling down, I'm this and this, please explain to me the sanity of wanting to be here, Lord. You know? Because I'm like, I'm believing this. I'm getting this, Jesus. Now, it wasn't like I wanted to go commit suicide or anything. Don't hear me say that. But it was just like, God, I, I want to be with you now. It was... It was this scripture, uh, Philippians 1. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I am to live on th in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which to choose. But I am hard-pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ. For that is very much better Yet to remain in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. That's a letter that Paul, the great apostle, wrote to the people in Philippians. That he, he got it. It's best for me and it's gain to go be with Jesus. But I stay to labor for Christ. I stay to be here as Christ lives through me. And as he lives through me, then that's what I stay here for. But to go be with Christ is gain. And Paul, who knew all of spirituality and these different things, to have written that. This is sometimes where I say for myself, it's like when I read certain scriptures in the Bible and as I live out my Christian life and I walk out my Christian life, then it's that thing where it's like I can relate to what they're saying. This is when the Bible really comes alive to me because it's like, I can relate to what they're saying. I get that. It's kind of like, man, I could have wrote that if Paul hadn't. Done. But then as I was doing that, and I mean, honestly, I was living there for a while. I was just in that place. And then the Holy Spirit led me and, and just spoke to me and led me to uh, Ecclesiastes 9. For whoever is joined with all the living there is hope. Surely a live dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know they will die, but the dead do not know anything, nor have they any longer a reward. For their memory is forgotten. Indeed, their love, their hate, their zeal have already perished, and they will no longer have a share in all that is done under the sun. Now, when God gave me that, one, it really rocked my world that I was thinking something. And again, the Holy Spirit led me something to where the Bible actually spoke to me in a situation where I was. Thus, again, I say to you now that I know there is more beyond this. I know that for a fact. And so as God gave me that, what I knew he was saying to me, like they said in the uh, Shawshank Redemption, when he said, either get busy dying or you get busy living. Yeah. And what I knew was, was that as God was speaking these things and the things that he was saying to me, was that uh, I needed to learn what death needed to happen first. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever lose his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? These are the words of the spiritualness of God speaking to us in this time, in this side of heaven. And he's letting us know about his side of heaven. And that we should contemplate and think deeply about all that we're trying to gain spiritually and as we go about things. In Romans 8, 
10. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. When I think back on it, and uh, I was feeling, you know, like I wanted to go, I was just needing to go, that I believe Jesus. And why am I wanting to be here? To be honest, I'm thankful to God that he took me to Ecclesiastes to show me that first I hadn't even lived, that I wanted to die, but I hadn't even been, you know, as we say, born again. I hadn't went into the born again process in my Christian walk just because I was going to church and I was reading the Bible and I was getting it, but I hadn't really fulfilled my born again part. You know, I guess you could say I was in the womb. I hadn't been birthed yet because the thing was to, I had to be birthed to understand now I had to die. And being born again means dying to myself. The things that Andrew wanted to do, all of the ambitions that Andrew had to be this, to do this, to go here and all this stuff, all of that had to cease. It had to cease. Somebody cut me off in the belt line. Uh-uh. Andrew said, that don't happen. Okay? But the new life says, it does, Andrew. Okay? Somebody speaks wrong to me and like, whoa, 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 I'm a grown man. Uh-uh, Andrew, you're a Christian. See, that's that death process. Every time when a co-worker comes to you and says something, look at you, and, and then you start to rise up because all of a sudden, wait a minute, they don't know who I am, do they? You know, as they say in my old neighborhood, they better recognize, you know, okay? They better recognize who they're talking to. But you see, that's the whole thing about Christianity with God. It's like this, that person has to go. That person has to die. And so that was the part that I hadn't done. I hadn't done any of that. And I was working through that and uh, going through it. Like I said, uh, since then I have been in the second Corinthians 15, 31 quote of Paul, I die daily. I die daily. And a lot of that is biting my tongue at certain situations and certain things, you know, and doing things like that. That's my death process. And I have been working in that process to do that with Jesus as he leads me, as things happen. And I tell you, you know what? That is hard. When he says, pick up your cross and follow me, it's like, oh man, maybe I can remove the cross and just jump in the casket, <laughs> you know? Because the cross part is the hard part. It is the hardest part. And working to get there. You know, when I looked at that and I was looking at the coffin, a thought came to me to honestly feel what Jesus felt. When we say Jesus went to the cross for us. See, a lot of this stuff we just say and we come to church and we make it a religion. But how do I get the feeling of it? How do I feel it? How do I know it? How do I feel it in me where it moves me? How do I look at the coffin and see that, but yet I picture Jesus, real life, looking at a cross that he has to go upon and suffer upon for me? The guy who falls down, the guy who makes mistakes, the guy who tries to die to self and then resurrect the old guy in a certain situation. You know, that guy is going back and forth. And then Jesus looks down from the cross and says, Andrew, it's okay. Keep trying. Keep going, Andrew. You just fill up with tears because it's so much love and it's so much patience and kindness. And it overwhelms me to feel it and to know it. And then I say, why must I stay here, Lord? If so much waits for me, if so much is there, if that's reality. And it's like, 
He says in Ecclesiastes, you have work to do. You have life to live. You have people to love. You have zeal, zeal to share with people. You have much to do because I'm asking you to do that. Can you do that? Sure, Lord. So it's a process of death already that is happening within us. You know, in Christianese, this is where we tell people, God's got a plan for you. Just come on. God's got a plan for your life. You know, just come up in there and we say that. But the part is, is letting them know that when they are ready to give up their plan for their lives and they will trust God with their life for his purpose and his plan, which does not have to match up with what they think should be. That's when we tell people that God's got a plan for their life and we're saying, come on in, God's got a purpose for you and a plan. Let them know again, like I said, letting them know that when they are ready to give up their plans for their lives and they will trust God with their life for his purpose and plan, which does not have to match up with what they think should happen. Then we tell them, now God's got a plan for your life and a purpose for your life. Because that's a little bit different. Matthew 26, 39, and he, Jesus, went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. See, we have all been chosen as a people of God, the elect, not the privilege, but to serve as the agent of his purpose. This is the first death. This is the greatest death. This is the death before that. That if I make that death, if I'm doing that death, if I'm dying to me and I'm really gaining hold of God and his purpose and his plan for my life, that I'm understanding it and that I'm really working to be an agent for God so that when I'm in the grocery store and the Lord says, go over here and pray for this person, I don't think of me. I don't resurrect. But, but what are they going to think of me, Lord? What are they going to do to me? What would what, what they say to me, Lord? When God says, hey, go do this and be this, I want you to say this to this person. It's not for me to resurrect Andrew, for me to get in a conversation with God about Andrew needs to be thought about, Lord, because then I'm going to be embarrassed if I go say this or if I go do this. I'm dead. I'm dead to self. So I'm an agent of the Lord. Is it just Bible words that I'm an agent of the Lord, Andrew? Or Andrew, are you an agent? Do you push through the fear and you just go up? Hey, I'm uh, 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 sorry, um, but um, um, God, you know, um, you know, yeah, stumbling through it. You know, but try, you know, then I'll write, now you're weird, not because of God, but because you stumbled through it. <laughs> you, know? you know, God's about to come in and save you, you know, because after I get done stumbling through it and go, yeah, and I just feel like God's saying I should pray for you some of your life. And then the person busts up in tears and then they're like, yes, yes. That's where God comes in and saves me, see, because then it was like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, and that kind of did. You know, I, I was in the grocery store one time, and I used to deliver there, and I was talking to a guy one time, and I told him, I says, hey, can I pray for you? You know, I'll, I'll pray for you. Can I pray? He goes, yeah. He goes, well, wishing, you know, good things are always wanted. You know, and I walked away thinking, yeah, well, wishing and good deeds are always wanted. Why do I fear praying for people? That's a good thing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's life-giving. What is my embarrassment about praying for people? You know? And again, where's the realness and who I am and what I do and what I believe if there's fear in it to be it and to do it? I have to live it. And it's a process of dying to self that Andrew doesn't live, that Christ lives in me and that I move forward in Christ.
And all that I've spoken about in the beginning is regarding death being placed in the right perspective when we die to that which is the fleshly part of who we are to live out the spiritual person connected in relationship with God. This is when I feel we gain the deeper understanding of real life and real death. It's because then we become connected to God. 2 Corinthians 5, 6. Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage. I say and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Therefore, we also have as our ambitions, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. When I truly get it and that our lives are here and are different and to be lived differently in regards to those who are not following Christ, then so many things are, at pl in, uh, are placed in his right perspective. When we truly get it to death to self, to living for Christ, to being about God, then everything gets placed in its right perspective. Our jobs, our families, all of it starts to fit together because then we start to take our place in our family. We start to take our place at our job. We start to take our place because of the identity of Christ and being an agent of his that then this, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. And as Christ lives in me, then my job can no own, but only be blessed because of the presence of God. Not that annoying voice of Satan that says, you're just one of them. Who are you? Who are you? Boo, boo, boo. Not that annoying voice, but the voice that is give credence to Christ. I am your servant. I am your agent. Go beyond me, Lord. Yeah, me and myself. No, I can do nothing for these people. But you, the power in me, can, Lord. And you want to. And you've given me discerning. You've given me the Holy Spirit. So as I learn and become that agent with Christ, and I work in through the spiritual, not the body, as I work by faith, not by sight, then this is how then we move the kingdom of, the, the kingdom of heaven forward. This is how the reality of God comes forward. This is how I am a Christian, not just being or trying to be a Christian. Because it goes to this. It's what Christ thinks and how Christ receives. It's not about us uh, judging one another and saying this is the standard. This is how we lined up. This is where we go. It's not on that. It's on Christ doing it and lining us up. And if he says I'm good to go, I'm good to go. Through all my mistakes, through the fall, I'm good to go. Because in my heart, there is a want to, Lord. There is a want to, to be with you and to walk with you and to find this. And so as I do that, we walk that out. 2 Timothy 1, verse 10. But now has been revealed by the appearing of our, of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. For this reason, I also suffered these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Trusting God with our children, now in life, and in death. Again, as we place death in perspective, and like I said, it's removing that fear because of the hope that we have. But it's also, like we said, sometimes it's not that I fear death, but it's the other processes in that. Sometimes it's, like I say, when my 
kids are young. My kids were young at the time when I was a young Christian, and I felt like I wanted to go home. But I felt like my wife and my kids were in a good place in life. They were in a good place with God. So that's where it was. But I can understand. It's like, for me to go is gain. But the people who are left behind, it's that stuff for when we're left behind, that, hey, we're going to miss you. We like having you around. That's true. But if I know and if I believe that you're going to be with Jesus, then in my selfishness, there is the sorrow of that. But yet there's the joy. The times you go to funerals and then they're saying the home going for whoever, because that's really what it is. But it is the process sometimes of who's going to take care of my kids. Oh, what about this if I'm gone? These things and this things. And we go through that in our life. But again, as we live life, are we then living life in the right perspective that these things are done? I had a buddy of mine a um, long time ago who he had cancer and, and stuff. And so we got to talk and stuff. And, you know, and he told me, he's like, yeah, it seems like somebody started a clock on you and different things. And I talked with him and we were just sharing and stuff. But I really learned from him um, to get busy living. And I was living to let my wife and my kids know that I love them. I started letting people around me know how much I cared for them and how much I loved them. I start, I quit. Maybe you've heard that country song. I love it. Live like you were dying. It's a great song. And it's like that thing in there, what he says, all that stuff. I loved before. It's like when people have those life-changing experiences, if they live through it, they come back and all of a sudden they have a different perspective on life. They don't get as mad. Things don't bother them as much. They start loving people they used to couldn't be around. A whole change. Because all of a sudden, there's a proper understanding of life. And then you start living it out. It's one of the greatest things I love about my Christianity. I love it. And I tell people, God has made the simple things great to me. Life, the simple things have become great to me. You know, it's the analogy when the kids are sitting around, they're, a little, they're all a little older now, and they're sitting around and, and having a good old time, and the kids are saying, oh, dad, mom, you know our greatest time in our life, and we were doing this, and they're telling mom and dad about the great time of their life, and we were playing cards, and we were eating popcorn, and dad's getting a little upset, you know, he's getting mad, like, because they're talking about this uh, 99 cent bag of popcorn and these $2 cards. Uh, the greatest time of your life was when I spent $80,000 and we went to Disney World. That was the greatest time of your life. You know? That was the greatest time. You know? But no, the greatest time with the bag of popcorn and the cards is because we got to share with each other. We got to live with each other. We got to laugh with each other. We enjoyed each other all night long. We didn't wait in lines. There wasn't crowd. There wasn't things vying for our attention and all of this. We just shared with one another. That's life. Getting along, just doing the simple things, you know? And so that's what God has given me. And those are the things that I have now learned to embrace. I've learned to embrace life in the proper place, in the right place. And in doing that, and now I've embraced Christ in such a way that I have no fear of this, none whatsoever at all. My life, I have been blessed. Things I'm, I have in my life, I'm living on bonuses. I got to tell you, church, I am on bonuses. I am a guy who was never going to get married. I was never going to have any kids. You know, all I ever needed was just a job to take me to my, to my, uh, I just needed a car to take me to work and back home. That's all I ever needed. You know, I remember my dad had asked me one time, he says, what do you want out of life, boy? And I says, well, I just want a job that I like going to, and I just want a car that'll get me to A and B and just happy, you know? And my dad looks at me and goes, what else? I said, basically, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, that ain't enough. Don't you know you're supposed to want more than that? Because life ain't going to give you nothing. <laughs> you know? And it's like, no, that was it. And so I've still learned that. And I still carry that. 
that God has helped me to understand that. And so now I live that out in such a great way of that and doing those things. Amen. Amen. Amen to life. Amen to the life after with Jesus. Amen. 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 I know it's a hard subject. Believe me. Like I told you when I started. Oh, Lord, really? Priestess? Oh, I hope I'm, I hope I'm reaching. I hope God is doing something. I'm just up here. I hope the Holy Spirit's moving. I'm just here. All right. You know, as we talk about death and the perspective of it, it's kind of like when we, when we look at it in its perspective. In our CLC class, we're learning the early church fathers, the people who preserved these particular scriptures, the people who got the scriptures when Jesus died and after the disciples died. Um, boy, there was a lot went on after they died to keep the scriptures in order, to canonize them and, um, and make the theologies that we, not, and, and to bring it into orthodoxy. But there was a lot of men and women at that time who put their lives on the line for these scriptures because things they believed in these words were so true that they were tortured by, that they put their lives on the line and they were killed by, they were exiled by. They were all these things. And these aren't the apostles, the people of the Bible. These are the people who were after the apostles, who their names aren't in the Bible. But they loved the Bible so, and they cared for the Bible so, and that they, they brought it to what we now have as Scripture. So again, one, when we look at death, is there then, like I said, it's not so much that I fear death, but it's how I die. Because are there things that I'm willing to die for? Because like I said, these people did that. We look, and as we are Christians in America, and we say with Jesus, we have the truth. We have the answer. But then we look over in the Middle East, and a guy is willing to strap a bomb on his body in the name of his religion to take himself out because he believes there's an afterlife and what's waiting for him, and take others out also. So then I'm like, wow, wait a minute here. If we are Christians and we've got the truth and he believes that and he's wrong, then how much more should I be at work in what I should be at work in? And Jesus isn't asking me to strap a bomb. He's asking me to go out and love people. He's asking me to go out and care for people because that's what the Bible's about. That's what the kingdom of heaven is about. And so that's what he's saying to take forward. But when I look at other people, you look at back in the day, the, the kamikaze pilot, how people had stuff that they would die for because they believed in it. This is why if I'm dying for something, it's for Christ, it is to die for self because I believe in him. I believe in it. And I'm glad he knows I'm slow and a procrastinator. So he's bearing with me in my process. But I am a lot further. How did the song go? Thank God I'm not what I used to what I used to be. Does it go like that? Thank God I'm not what I used to be, but I'm not what I ought to be. I think it goes something like that. So he's saying, thank him, I'm not what I was, while I still get to be what I'm trying to be. Yeah. Paraphrasing. <laughs> all right. I'm glad my grandmama ain't here. <laughs> I'd be having to sing that one all day. All right. As we face death in many ways in our bodies, here's the deal. It's never to let death happen to our faith. We're never to let death happen to our faith in Jesus. We're never to let death happen to our identity of who we are in Christ. We should never let those things die. Our identity in Christ as his sons and his daughters should always live on and forevermore be alive in us. I believe that death does not stop our relationship and our fellowship with Jesus and the Father. That does not interfere with my relationship with Jesus and the Father. If anything, this is my vessel towards him. 
This is, this is there. That's how I get to the Father. That's not a stopping. And as long as I'm here and as much tries to happen to me, a lot tries to kill my faith in Christ and a lot tries to kill my identity in Christ. And those things I will never let die to keep them going. Even the Native Americans believe in an afterlife. There's many people who believe that there's life after death, and there is. But Jesus says he is the way, that he's the one that brings us to the Father. And therefore, as we sit here, this is what we feel in that. Having hope in Christ is more than immortality. It's eternal life with Jesus and the Father. My loss of fear regarding death is my knowledge of the truth of the cross. It's the cross where Jesus died and where he was resurrected. Romans 6, 8. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lived, he lived to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And this is where it is. It's in the cross is our life. It's what Jesus did on the cross. That is our greatest hope. It is the coffin and the cross that comes together because it's what Jesus did on the cross in dying that he was resurrected, that he brought us life. And so now that we have the cross of Christ to live in, that's the thing for us is his cross. And so that is our hope. That's where I place my hope. And when I have that, that hope in the cross of Christ Jesus, then that is the thing. I think I have a picture of the cross there. And is that's where the hope of Christ is for us. It's in there. It's in what's there and beyond that. You see, as we live now as Christians, we come to the cross. But in death, it is the process into the reality of the cross. Because like I said, there will be a resurrection day. We will rise and Christ will be there. Pastor Tom said in his message that when I was listening to it, one of his statements, he said that the grave holds the body, but the spirit is in heaven with Christ until his coming. And so we're there. I've always thought even back, you know, as my brother used to say before the preacher walked upright. Um, yeah. And uh, back in that day was a little bit of fear because Resurrection is happening. When you come up out of there and you see Jesus, everything's real. It is what it is. Just like Ecclesiastes says, it all stops. There is no do-overs. There's no go-backs. It's up. I see Jesus. When I see Jesus, as I am now, I am happy to see Jesus. But if I'm not following Jesus and I don't believe in Jesus, I'm not living my life for him, this is not an image I really want to see because all of a sudden it's all true. Everything that little annoying friend of mine or coworker ever said to me is all of a sudden true. All of that stuff is true now. And what can I do? Because right now I'm locked in Ecclesiastes. There is no more zeal. I don't get the love or hate. I'm just here. And so therefore, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you're just here today, I tell you for a fact, you have a resurrection day coming. Amen. You have a resurrection day coming. And Jesus will greet you. Now, how you feel about that, that's up to you. But I'll tell you, don't let the arrogance and pride that Satan tried to put in you keep you from being humble and receiving the love of Jesus. I just put that out there. God's at work. Because in that Christ, in that cross, Philippians 3.20, for our citizenship is in heaven, for which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body 
of our hum humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the extension of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. All the powers in Christ for what he did on that cross and how he did these things in which he's done. That he has done this and moved in such a mighty way. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now I say this, brethren, that the flesh and the blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on the immortality. But when the perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on the immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is in sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my bro beloved brethren, be steadfast in my always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Again, amen. That the Lord, that Paul, he's writing these scriptures trying to tell these people back then and encouraging us, move forward in your faith. Keep living out your life in Christ. And it is not in vain to do these things because the death is, of, is the sting of death is gone. There is not there. But in the midst of that, living out our life for Christ, living out our lives with our loved ones to enjoy them, you know, one of the things I feared most when I was a young kid was my dad dying. I feared it. When I was young, I was about 12 or 8 to 12, I really feared it. I don't know why. But then as we got older, and my dad would always say to me, you know what? Hey, boy, you better do this. You better learn this. Hey, I'm teaching you this, boy, because I ain't going to be around forever. I ain't going to be around forever. Hey, boy, I'm teaching you this. And that was one of the things that I started learning. As I grew up, I got comfortable with my father's passing because it was okay because he was letting me know he's not going to be around forever. And I know that. And so I need to learn from him what to do. The same thing as I teach my kids. I'm teaching my kids. I've enjoyed them. I love them. But I'm trying to teach them and raise them in a way because I'm not going to be here forever. And one of the things I found out in the world, you know, I think kind of before I was upright, and this is why it's such a good thing to have Christians in the world. Because where it's not Christians, people don't raise your children for you. If your kids come out and they don't know something, they're pretty vulnerable out there. People take over them. So it's where we raise our kids and do these things to love. And this is why as agents of Christ, because you know what? There are kids out there who need someone, an agent of Christ, to come into their life, to speak something to them, to encourage them, to lift them up. There needs to be an a, a agent of Jesus, someone who possessed that body of Christ. So as I've tried to speak to you here in this message, is to give you the power and the hope of the cross. Yeah. That to let you know that we should not fear, and when we see the coffin, I should not be afraid. I should ask myself and challenge myself. As I look at the coffin, where am I on this side of the coffin? How full am I living it? And not for my own enjoyment to get vacations and do these things, but how full am I living it to God? And for him. And if you're doing that and your conscience is fine, glory to God. Then enjoy that. Enjoy where you are with God. Enjoy the whole journey of it. But that's the thing. Enjoy your relationship with Christ. Enjoy the moment that God speaks with you. Find enjoyment in the life that God has given us that Jesus died on the cross for us to have. Not just making it through because I got to pay my bills and I got to go through this and I got to do that and do these things. It's to be enjoyed. It's to be encouraged. 
don't let the politicians get you down yeah. this year, okay? <laughs> don't let them get you down. Here you go, I'm gonna give you this, I'm gonna put this in your head. When you're sitting there and you're getting mad, who's ever your guy ain't saying the right thing or who ain't your guy and he's saying the right thing, Donald, whoever, I don't know, Hillary, whichever one. Whenever they're sitting there and you find yourself getting mad, Pastor Andrew is saying, get up, go enjoy life. Get up, go enjoy life. All right, that's in your head. Get up, go enjoy life. All right, you get up and go enjoy life. You know, turn that off and go enjoy life and go have yourself some fun. Don't let them get you down. Jesus is bigger than that. Amen. You know, he's going to figure it all out. So I want to, I'm going to have them play a video for it, or play an audio of a sister who went to church here. Her name was uh, Rosemarie Platt. And uh, she began, I began attending City Church, a.k.a. MGT, uh, in 1978. Rosemarie Platt was her name. Um, she went to heaven on Thursday, February 21st, 2013. Um, the funeral was held here at City Church um, uh, March 1st. Pastor Joel uh, did the service. I'm going to play a video because somebody, when I was, like I said, I tell you, I was talking to the whole staff and different people in our staff about um, this message because I really had the process and it was like, oh boy, I don't know, you know, just working it through and so talked about it. And someone sent me an audio of Rosemary calling into the church. And I listened at it in my office and I was like, wow, okay. Thank you, Lord. Again, confirmation on this sermon. And I want to give a great thanks to Mr. Tom Whedon, who really helped me get this thing put together. So I thank you, Mr. Whedon, who uh, really helped me get this together. And Debbie Horsfield, my assistant, because it has some background noise in it. So uh, would you play the audio, please? Hi, church. Rosemary calling in. I'm very weak. I'm very tired. And I want to go be with my Lord. I'm ready to go. It's been very difficult the last few days. I was also at urgent care the night before last. I'm weary. I want to go. I want to go to my home. My home is heaven. My heavenly home. I love you, church, each and every one, even if I don't know you. God bless church. God bless you all. Thank you for loving me, those who know me. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for everything that God has done through you. Because he lives. I have lived because he rises. I will rise, and I hope that will be soon. God bless all from one end of the earth of the universe to the other. As high as the heavens are, as low as hell is, God bless us. I love you, I love you, and I love you. Good night, Rosemary. Amen. 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 That's the voice and the testimony of a sister who believed, who had the realness of Jesus in her life. And uh, that's what I'm, I'm working for. It all works out. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to be sensitive, and I hope I've been sensitive to where different people are, if there's illnesses that are happening in people right now and people are dealing with stuff, if there's been family members who've been lost recently, sorry for your loss. But I was just trying to bring the word of God and the truth of God, that the part that we don't like to look at and we don't want to say or sometimes, but it all works out. It, it all works out. I had the chance to have lunch with a gentleman, one of our brothers here who's going through some stuff right now at the time. And, because I wanted to kind of get his perspective because he's really facing that. And he's in a good place in his spirit in receiving that where is this, what's happening, what's going on. 
you know, and he left me with that. He's the one who let me, that said to me, it all works out for us either way, staying here or going. We'll be with Jesus. So, you know, that's his, his take on it. It's going to work out for him. It'll work out for all of us. And I believe that. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it works out. So with that, it's where we go forward and continue to live our life with Christ and doing the things that we do. And yet, we don't have a fear of death. We don't fear these things, you know, of, of all of that. I've often said, because I see it to be true, we're all one doctor's visit away from cancer or whatever it is. You know, I mean, you go there and many people have went. They've never went there for that. It was this and this, and then you're told. Because you see, when I'm faced with that death, then that's when what is my Christianity is about. When I'm really faced with those situations, then who am I now? Because that'll expose if I've just been living in the freedom of Christianity. But now when I get to that point where I'm supposed to really huddle down with Christ, now I, can't, I find that hard to do. It's just like I said, when I'm trying to die to self and I'm put in a certain situation and the old man's trying to be resurrected, I'm at a, I'm at a turning point there. I, I, I got to put down the old man and, and let whatever happens happen and be okay with it because I'm living in a new way. I'm of a new kingdom, a new person, and a new civilization. Would you rise, please? Uh, the worship band team come up, please. For the... Again, like I said, if, you've, uh, if you're here and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, we're going to have prayer teams down here. Um, if the prayer teams would come down, uh, people will pray with you. You can let people know, I'll be down here, that you'd like to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you so much for your message. We thank you for this word. And Father, I just pray that you would bring confirmation to what has been said, that you would now take us deeper into thought, into reality of the cross of Christ and the life of Christ. Father, that life, your life, your giving life, what Jesus did, overpowers a fear of death, Father. That we live on because we know that nothing, not even death, separates our relationship or our fellowship with you. That we would live in joy and in gladness in what may come and what will be. Father, we are thankful that you have drawn us through your son to yourself. We are thankful that you have counted us so worthy and that we are so loved. And Father, I pray for those who do not know your son, who have not received them, that you would touch their hearts. Father, that you would draw them now to know Jesus. Father, the saddest thing would be is that when one wakes up and and opens their eyes and Jesus is standing there. Father, it's not so much as a fear of going to hell, but so much love that they have lost out on. And all they wanted when they were here was to be loved. And yet you were there with all the love they needed and they just couldn't receive it. Father, I pray that many would come to know the love of your son and of your love that they would know that this is a love story not a rule book we thank you father and help us to go forth as agents of yours dying to self being your agents bringing forth peace and love and the goodness and the well goodness and well meaning of Jesus Christ into the places that you sent us. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, church. Be blessed.